Uh, so we're continuing, and today we're going to finish up the series we've been doing on the duties and mission of citizens of the, he uh, of the heavenly kingdom. Uh, basically, the points that Father Moon made in his uh, peace message speech called the Chano Guk is the ideal kingdom of heaven of eternal peace. Uh, and in any nation, um, there are certain citizens in that nation, that country, who s historically have made... Um, sometimes the greatest sacrifice in terms of living for the sake of others and the benefit of others and um, even sacrificing their lives or their well-being and last Friday uh, in America we had a day to honor those uh, people <coughs> veterans veterans day so um, just in remembrance and thinking about that you know the um, if you think about America's history so often uh, when America has been strong and it's strong because of those who are part of the military, then the world actually has had more peace. Mm -hmm. And when America has been appeasing and kind of looking weak, then bullies of the world have felt free to go ahead and, and, and do what they wanted. So it's again a, a debt that we owe and appreciation that we should have for those people in the military, for veterans, those people. So. Um, let me uh, share this. This was what po was posted on our Family Federation website. That we are grateful t for your service and we are praying for your safety as you work to preserve our security. Even more than that, we hope that God will be able to use your selfless efforts to bring nearer the day when all humanity lives as one family under God and there will no longer be need for weapons and soldiers. So that was posted on the, the Family Federation website on, on Friday. So um, any, um, do we have any uh, veterans here? Or families of veterans? We have uh, the family of veterans, and some of us have relatives who are involved in, in the services. So let's uh, spiritually, together, let's all acknowledge those people, and let's give them all a big hand. Right. Thank you, veterans. Right. Thank you for our veterans. So <clears throat> again, uh, just to recap, um, in addition to you know, the incredible value that veterans have for citizens, uh, Father Moon outlined the duties and missions of the people of the Heavenly Kingdom of Chano Guk. And I'm hoping by now you have all this memorized, because that's been my mission, <laughs> is to have you know what, what is the calling and what is the, the duties and mission uh, that Father Moon encouraged us to, to pursue. So what's the first one? The first one is that we should practice what? True love. Practice true love. That's the beginning of everything, right? In our lives, in God's purpose and vision for us. Be people who practice true love. To follow our conscience. That means uniting our mind and body. That we share the truth that we have, that we witness, that we educate others. That we live in harmony with the spiritual world. And that we overcome selfishness and selfish individualism, as Father Moon calls it, and that we care and invest and protect nature, the environment we live in. And then the last point he makes is that we be heaven's emissaries. And that's what uh, um, last time I, I spoke about the first half, but heaven's emissaries is what I want to talk about again today as we bring all this into conclusion. We are all called to be emissaries, representatives, ambassadors of heaven and to represent heaven. So here's, uh, I'll just read the excerpts from that particular speech. Father Moon says, As registered citizens of Chanoguk, you have the mission to make this era blossom and bear fruit in blessing and glory. Therefore, please become heaven's emissaries, fulfilling the dual missions of the Peace Kingdom Police Force and Peace Kingdom Corps. Uh, he spoke about this in many different uh, speeches from when he first established the Universal Peace Federation, which brought together all of the previous existing organizations into one in 2006. That was the first speech that he used this term, the um, Peace Kingdom Police Force and Peace Kingdom Corps. Uh, in a later speech, he says, these two organizations will play correspond roles corresponding to those of the red blood cells and the white blood cells in our body. In all corners of the world, they will nourish and protect. 
They will be sentinels defending, protecting, and cultivating this beautiful world, this Garden of Eden given to us by God for which we need to be grateful. So, again, last time I spoke about the Peace Kingdom Police Force, the, the white blood cells in our body. When there's an infection or disease, the white blood cells are what? Go to fight it off and to help us become healthy again. It's healthy and strong. And particularly, I focused in on our mission to be people who resolve conflict. Conflict resolution champions. That's what we're meant to be as unificationists. And I think we've got a good opportunity, especially after this election, <laughs> right? Where there's so much divisiveness that we can be people who can bring people from different perspectives together to find a common base to work together for the good. And I think our country desperately needs that. Now, you know, I know we're on both sides of, of the aisle and perspectives, but as unification, we can bring it together because we're all committed to the common good of bringing a, a, a world of true love and true peace. So, today, I want to talk particularly about the Peace Kingdom Core. Which the best reflection is like the Peace Corps. But the calling of the red blood cells is they bring oxygen, which spiritually we talk about oxygen is like love to our life. Bring oxygen and nourishment to the cells of our body. They nurture and the vision of us Peace Kingdom Corps members is that we're people who cultivate a good and healthy wor world. As Father Moon says, to make this era blossom right? And bear fruit in blessing and glory. So in, um, in thinking about this, I thought a lot about the uh, American Peace Corps, which actually is a quite inspiring um, vision and model uh, to look at. It was um, established back in um, uh, yeah, 1960 during his campaign uh, President Kennedy, candidate Kennedy at that time, he was speaking to people, uh, the university students. He said, okay, university students. He called them and he said, okay, how many of you would be willing to serve their country and the cause of peace by living and working in the developing world, in underdeveloped countries? And he's also famous for the expression, you know, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And he was a Democrat. <laughs> Strong anti-communist. But, you know, that's a beautiful legacy, a beautiful foundation that uh, America has in serving the world. And here's the mission statement. It's to promote world peace. So this is the mission statement of the American Peace Corps. To promote world peace and friendship by fulfilling three goals. The first is to serve other countries to help them, particularly with uh, train, you know, helping training and education of the, the people of the country, to just pass on the skills and talents that we have in America, so to help other countries. Secondly, it was so those countries could also better understand Americans. Honestly speaking, most people's experience of Americans is what? Tourists. The rich, spoiled Americans. And what? <laughs> you mean, c your coffee doesn't taste like my coffee. <laughs> you know, the ugly American stories of the ugly American traveling around the world. But instead, this would be Americans in living together side by side so that people could experience them as we really are, as genuine people. And the third uh, goal was that as Americans living abroad, living in other countries, we would also come to understand and overcome stereotypes about other countries and, and, and places in the world because we live side by side with people from different cultures and different environments. It's a beautiful vision. If you think about that for our you know, Peace Kingdom Corps, again, we, our calling is to serve the world, to make a difference in, in other countries and the world. Also, by working together with people, they can understand us better as unificationists. Not as this, uh, you know, moony stereotype, crazy person, but as a, a, a person who cares and invests, right? And also, we can appreciate people's circumstances and situations. Sometimes we sit up in our ivory tower and think, oh, you know, 
this, 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 and without the reality of people's difficult circumstances and situations. But when we get out and we take action to serve, to help, then we can truly understand and we can truly love and care, care for people. <clears throat> so, the Peace Kingdom Corps, it's about being people who contribute, make a difference in the world and making this world a better place. And one of the key components here for me is that it's about being producers and builders. The Peace Corps and the Peace Kingdom Corps is about making good things happen and developing. Oftentimes, one of the challenges that we face in our society and our culture today is that we easily fall into the habit and lifestyle of just being consumers. I'll just sit in front of my TV <laughs> and just watch <laughs> the world go by. <laughs> I'll just play on my games. <laughs> you know, I'll just, you know, consume. I'll just take in without the thought of how am I making a difference in the world? How am I con con contributing? <clears throat> Especially once we retire. <laughs> Then it becomes very easy. Oh man, I've done my giving, right? <laughs> Those of us who are getting to retirement age, we start thinking about that. But the truth is, you know, m many people, when they retire, they die. <laughs> because if you stop contributing, if you stop making a difference in things in the world around you, then your meaning, your power, you know, a lot of the joy in life disappears. You know, it's so much fun for a while watching, reading, being entertained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at some point, we feel vitality and joy when we're volunteering to do something. And when we're retired, we have more time. <laughs> Speaking to the retirees, we have more time to do great things to do, to, and to experience even more joy in our life. And if those of us who are blessed to be grandparents, we have even more opportunities to give, right, and to make a, a difference. So, being producers and builders is, is an attitude that I really want to encourage because we are all members of this Peace, Peace Kingdom Corps. <clears throat> and building the big vision is the culture of heart. Now, one of the best job descriptions, overall job descriptions that we have in our unification tradition is what? It's family pledge. Right? You know, our regular pledge that we recommit ourselves determine ourselves before God. There's you know, eight points. To seek homeland and build the heavenly kingdom. Right? To build Chonoguk, the heavenly kingdom. Not enjoy membership in it, but to build. But to build. So, being producers, being creators, being that peace kingdom core that builds the kingdom, doesn't just reside in the kingdom. That we represent heaven as as children, God's children, sons and daughters, as patriots, as saints, and divine sons and daughters of God. That we perfect the four realms of heart in our family. So working in our family, cultivating and perfecting our family. And not just our own family, but also that we perfect the universal family of all humanity as sons and daughters under God. That we unite the spiritual world and the physical world. That we move heavenly fortune and take that blessing, which means making sacrifices, making conditions to move heavenly fortune and passing that blessing on, conveying that blessing to the world around us, the people around us, living for the sake of others, the core motto, you know, number seven. And then finally, that uh, the vision of perfecting this realm of liberation and freedom. This is great job description, kind of challenging, pretty big picture. And all of these eight different pledges or promises, they begin with what? We are the owners. We are the ones responsible for the heavenly kingdom. We are not just consumers. We're not just, oh, I'm, I have the rights and I can do what I want because I'm a citizen of the heavenly kingdom. No, these are, as owners of the heavenly kingdom, we are the ones called to make this happen. And how do we make it happen? Again, each pledge ends with by centering on true love. Right? True love is the core motivating force and power. And it's a challenging force and power in our lives. But working to cultivate that 
to be people who can accomplish through that. So this is definitely the, 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 the big vision, the, the spiritual picture. But I want to just finish up with talking about practically in looking at four areas. There's, there's probably hundreds of different areas that we can contribute as Peace Kingdom Core uh, members. But the first one is that we are in a position to, through education, to make a difference in the world. To share in our environment. One of the core missions of the Pe American Peace Corps is to share skills, to share training. All of us have skills and talents in one or more areas that we can share. You know, some of us, you know, it's good with computers and technology. Some of us, it's hopeless around computers and technology. <laughs> and so we can use that help, right? Some of it's about health. Some of us, maybe it's legal. Some of it's organizational. Some of it's planning. All kinds of skills that we can help others to develop based on the foundation of our own skills. But even bigger than what in conveying skills, we have something so precious, and that's a worldview, a way of looking at life, particularly the way of understanding God as not the authoritarian judge on high who's waiting to punish the bad evildoers, but the loving parent who's desperately trying to nurture us, to raise us up to people who can experience true joy and true fulfillment in our lives. The world desperately needs a worldview that can embrace all the different aspects of humanity and bring them to God. That we can experience true joy and fulfillment. <clears throat> it's uh, the, Just the last um, couple of days, uh, as a family, we've started going through the Kauza material. How many of you remember Kauza? Kauza was our critique of Marxist, uh, the Marxist and communist worldview and the counterproposal of Godism. So talking to, and these lectures and, and conferences were given to uh, clergy, but also to politicians, uh, nonprofit leaders, all people who are in a position to make things happen in the world. And it, was a, a, it is a worldview that embraces God at the center, living for the sake of others, and these core values as the ways to bring peace in the world, but also to bring joy and fulfillment in our individual lives and in our families. So we have a lot to share with others in terms of a worldview and being able to w share that. <clears throat> especially after this election. Oh, I, I, in my office, of course, I'm, I'm the token Republican in the office, and everyone's like crying on, you know, after the election, you know, and, and, and you know, they just dirty looks at me as, you know, you're an evil person, you know. And so how in that environment do I uh, <clears throat> bring a heavenly worldview, right? <laughs> a positive. It's basically, it's because we're all looking for the common base that we all share. Our unificationist worldview starts with what do we have in common? What, what common base do we have that we can build on? Because we all want a good world. We all want a peaceful world. We have different ideas about how to best get there, but that's what we all want. So how do we share that kind of worldview? It's, it's, it's a challenge. But being present and also, you know, when people know you, work side by side with you, then whatever your opinion is, well, I know you as a human being. I know you're not just a caricature, a monster, a stereotype, right? So <clears throat> we have a lot to share in terms of our worldview. Sharing the divine principle and the understanding about God. Also, we have a lot to share in terms of the development of our own personal character. You know, we want to nurture and support within our families, within our you know, relationships with people, especially in the opportunities we have to mentor. You know, strong and resilient people, especially young people, who are able to sacrifice, overcome procrastination, the ability to delay gratification for a higher goal, to, to persevere through hardships and difficulties. Lots of character qualities that we, number one, have to exhibit ourselves, <laughs> we have to practice ourselves, but also we want to nurture. We have lots to share in terms of education. You know, not just practical skills, but also over and over our worldview and also as, as individuals. Second broad area where we, we can make a difference, <clears throat> practically speaking, is in the arts and media. It's so inspiring. Music is such a powerful force, isn't it? You know, to stimulate the emotions. The unification thought talks about the theory of art and the purpose of art is to 
help people experience God more completely and to experience joy. So, <clears throat> music is a powerful, powerful force for bringing joy and the experience of emotion so deep. So, music, there's dance, there's theater, there's the visual arts, there's you know painting, there's writing, but also there's building and designing and creating things. You know, as we shape things, there's there's cleaning up the house, <laughs> making the house a work of art. You know, there's so many ways that art in our lives, practically, we can build the peace kingdom. And that we're called to do. Taking those talents and putting them to use. That's where we're going to find the greatest joy. And that's also where we're going to be able to multiply that joy and fulfillment. A third area is in business and technology. <clears throat> From a principal perspective, with God at the center of our businesses, business is about serving others for mutual benefit. Not to rip people off or, oh yeah, how much can I you know, <laughs> con them for? But how can I serve in a way that really benefits people, provides them with a product that they value, and that I can also benefit from it, value, you know, because we all need to make a living, right? But we want to do it by serving others in a positive way. As Peace Kingdom Core members, we have at our heart how can my business, how does my work bless the people who are my customers, who are my clients? And technology is, is you know, there's so much happening in technology now that, that can make a difference in the world, a positive difference in the world. And finally, just to, not that this is an, ex, you know, an exhaustive list, there's many, many other areas where each of us is called, we have our own skills, our own qualities, talents, and abilities to make a difference in the world, in our community. Of course, our first community is our family, but then the, our school, you know, our, our, our people we know in school, the people that we work with, our neighbors, the community around us, the people that we interact with on a daily basis. We always are called to be representative Peace Kingdom core members who multiply and represent God's love in any situation, in every situation. So, <clears throat> I want to just close with reminding us about the, you know, our vision, you know, the 2020 vision, is building these seven, you know, starting with seven heavenly kingdom nations, seven Chonoguk nations. This is our prayer, this is our 2020 vision and goal, that we're supporting and we're seeing families that are God-centered and experiencing joy, happiness, and fulfillment. I, this is a high ideal. Sometimes, you know, you look at high ideals and you just get discouraged. But we need to have a vision and proclaim that vision through our thoughts, through our prayers, through our, our uh, uh, meditation, that we see where we're going, even if we're not here now. First thing you seem to do when I hold up a goal is like, I see everything is inconsistent with it. Like, ah, <laughs> and get discouraged. But by holding those vision, even those idealistic, far-fetched visions out in front of us, we move that direction. So, growing our, our movement in membership, influence, and assets. Young people, raising up them up as leaders for the future. And also that especially we are always always making a contribution to the larger world. Please know, you know, each one of us is a difference maker. Each one of us changes the world around us by what we do. So let's make our actions be actions that truly bring joy to God, that truly bless others, and also fulfill our desire, our hope, to be people who do contribute that do make a difference in the world. So I encourage you to explore your skills, your talents, your gifts, your abilities and see where where can I use these amazing gifts that I have to make a difference in the world around us. As Father Moon says, let's make this era blossom and bear fruit in blessing and glory. Please uh, let me uh, end with this from uh, Father Moon. History will forever remember you for leading a noble life of devotion for the well-being of humanity 
and world peace as we globally develop the Peace Kingdom Corps and the Peace Kingdom Police Force. Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, uh, we're so grateful for the ways that you've worked in our lives and to bring us even to this point. We know that we have still ways to go and we continue to grow and develop as your sons and daughters that, that can reflect and bring your love to any circumstance, any situation in, uh, that we uh, experience in our lives. Heavenly Parent, we're so grateful that we could be alive at this amazing time in history when your providence of restoration is so close to bring, bringing breakthrough and fulfillment, the end of, of so many thousands of years of suffering of human history. Heavenly Parent, even though we in our own practical-minded thinking can't see the vision of the future that you have in your heart, but we want to lift it up, starting with our hearts and our minds, to see that vision and to live consistent with that so that, Heavenly Parent, we can bring that re to be reality in our daily lives. Thank you so much for your love, the foundation that we stand on, the sacrifice of so many people who went before us, even remembering, especially those as we just celebrated Veterans Day, people who gave their lives for the sake of their nation, Heavenly Parent, people who continue to live and sacrifice for the sake of the larger, larger community. Heavenly Parent, please guide us that we can be peace, kingdom, police force that help resolve conflict and bring healing where there's hurt. And that we can be heavenly kingdom, peace, kingdom, core members who multiply goodness and build your kingdom. Heavenly Parent, we thank you. And as your sons and daughters and as blessed sense your families, we offer up this prayer and ourselves again to you. Amen. And adieu.